it's very important to us that people look at the building, look through the building. Now we're open to our neighbors. So this is an opening to the world for Franklin and Marshall. And with this magnificent forest around us, these hundred year old trees, it really helps keep our students immersed in nature, even when they're indoors. I'm looking at a tree behind you right now, which is just splendid. Everywhere you look, I see a tree trunk here. I see a tree trunk. Everywhere I look, I see the tree. My ability to go from the roots of the tree to, to its canopy through the building, or to always be turning into a direction that situates me from looking south, then looking north, then looking south again, is allowing me to contextualize my natural environment in an embodied way, which I think is the really tricky thing to describe to, about this building because you can't see it, you can't photograph it. It's temporal and it's sequential, and it goes from the beginning of the staircases all the way to the top where you have the final opening in the balcony. That is a kind of contextualism that is profound and philosophical. Hello, oh, good to yeah. see you. Good to, good to see, see you. you. Oh my God. One of the things that I felt when I came here, when I looked at this building and I saw these octagonal verticals, four of them, and the way that this building is made, it's very inventive. I felt free when I look at this building. And Ben Winter, the great donor client, wanted a piece of modern architecture for the art school. Lux et Lex, light and law. So my first sketch is the idea of Benjamin Franklin with his kite getting electricity on the string and the key and some kite-like form floating and then a heavy base, so light and heavy. These are amazing old trees, some hundreds of years old and huge trees. And I said, this building should defer to these gigantic trees. And I made this sketch where the root balls of these giant arboretum trees shape this building. So it would be concave around the whole architecture. And then now the clarity of the heavy and the light had a geometry. The actual structure is like a box kite. It's a brachiating form that wanders through the trees. All the trees on the side are preserved. So the concept is actually pragmatically saving all the trees. So one of the things about the heavy and the light, the heavy base, these are concrete walls, solid, right? They're supporting the whole building. So all the heavy work, the, the sculpture and heavy materials is located here. And then that's a gallery. Is that still used as a gallery? Still used as a gallery? So that's still a gallery. That's interesting. I'll tell you something about being an architect. You come back after three years, they don't use the building the way you thought they were going to use it. So that's a gallery and this is the shop. So success. I want to go to the different rooms and see how they're being used. So would you like to see other rooms? Yeah, let's let's go up. An architect makes a building, but how is it being used? How do you guys use it? Do you like it? By the skylight and the space and the activity that goes on, it's really nice to run into the students, you know, and see what they're doing, the youthful energy around. And we spent quite a large amount of time here. Yeah, you can tell it's lived in. Right. It's, this looks like an apartment. Yeah. yeah. No, it's very feels very. So who, what music do you, do you compose the music? Yeah. Can, can we hear something? Yeah. I love my machine because my life depends on it every day. Every hour, every minute. I don't even remember this room, by the way. I'm going to look at my drawings, and I think this is supposed to be a storage room for the auditorium. <laughs> I really love the fact that this is very used, you know? When you just open the building, these rooms are empty, and you wonder, what's going to go on in there? Now you don't wonder what's going on. Look at all that paint. Look at the empty containers. Look at the printing. You can feel the energy of somebody creating something in here. Fantastic. 
I am a business and Spanish major here, so I have no connection to art or have not taken any art classes actually, but I find this place to be really beautiful and really nice, whether it's in the daytime with all the natural light, but also it provides like a isolation that I don't get anywhere else on campus. And so whether it's a classroom, the atrium, or just like a regular conference room, it's really nice to just do work and kind of chill with my friends. One of the really nice features of this building is when you walk in, it doesn't feel like there's any hallways, all of the space is usable. So even when you're transitioning between rooms, the space that you're in just adjoins to all the classrooms and lets you go between, but there's also spaces to sit and hang out and talk. A lot of professors like to leave the doors to the classrooms open. All of them are really large and they like turn on these axes so that they don't feel really like a door, they feel more like a movable wall. And you feel a lot more connected with the people in the other classes, even though you're not in these classes together, you're all learning together. Even though we have a lot of rooms here, it doesn't have hallways. It has this sort of commons area and then big pivot doors that open onto the commons area. And here you can see the, the real idea of the roof. The box kite structure is in the walls and then the roof is also made out of the same magnetic induction bent pipes. And then the Amish craftsmen laid in all the roof beams and they did it in like a week and a half. It was amazing. So the entire top of the building is Amish built. So this building is rather light. See, downstairs, if I go knocking on a wall, it's heavy. This is wood. There's a truss in there. That's a wood wall. And in every, every room in this building, there's natural ventilation and natural light. Obviously the walls, they're glass and they're translucent. And so it feels like only this thin wheel of separation between you and the outside. But the windows set into them, because they're so large, you can like look outside and you can feel like the calmness of the park. You have this idea that the, the building's gonna respond to these root balls. Now, how are you gonna do this? You can't afford curved glass, but if you use glass structural plank, you can go around the corner. These are facets, these are square. There's no curved glass in this building. It's too expensive. But what's interesting about this is it's the super insulated wall with Okaluk, which is like polar bear hair, hollow. It's very, very ecological. And I gotta say, at night, it is absolutely gorgeous. It glows and it simply illuminates this whole corner of the neighborhood. So what we intended this space for was a place for self-expression and self-discovery, but I think it's actually fulfilling an even higher function, which is that it actually works to give us a place for fun, for play, and also really a place for hope, for aspiration. And I'm very glad that we have this building that allows for higher thinking and to allow us to rise out of the morass of everything that's difficult and aspire.